of transfigured glory was revealed to Peter, James, and John as you stood on the mountain between Moses and Elijah, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You are revealed to us again in word and sacrament, Christe eleison. Christe eleison. In the fullness of time you shall come in final glory with salvation for all your people, Kyrie eleison. May we be strengthened in your grace and mercy and equipped for your kingdom. Before I am taken from you. 
Elisha replied, Please, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. You ask for a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they continued walking and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, my father, the chariots and the cavalry of Israel. And Elisha saw no more. Then he took hold of his clothes and tore them apart. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The song for today's founding year means to encourage the chant of all.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. So that his clothes became dazzling white. It was Jesus who stood between Elijah and Elijah, Elijah the great prophet and Moses the lawgiver. It was Jesus of whom God spoke, saying, This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. And it was Jesus who remained when the clouds lifted and Elijah and Moses were gone. It was Jesus. It was Jesus all along. Perhaps you've been following the news lately. It seems that there have been several folks who had one reputation, a reputation of being good and decent and trustworthy, only to, to discover behind the scenes there was a different persona, a troubled individual. Some have been accused of sexual impropriety, some have been accused of taking advantage of teenage girls. And this past week, it seems that there are those who seem to perpetrate spousal abuse. To their co-workers, these individuals have seemed to have it all together. They seem to have the qualities that held out a promise for something great. But in private, they were plagued with personal issues that put their good intentions at risk. Now perhaps all of us carry around some baggage. Perhaps all of us have a side that we'd rather folks not see. That side that haunts our peaceful dreams. That side that reminds us of the times when we kind of screwed things up. I know I have my own brokenness to deal with. Heck, even the disciples were known to have a shadow side. The plain truth is that some of the most attractive, some of the most admired, some of the most skilled people have an equally unattractive self. The best that we can hope for is to really know ourselves and to do the best we can with wrestling with our brokenness, and perhaps with God's grace to overcome it. Recognizing and admitting our shortcomings is a good start. 
at least then we can be on guard and be more aware when that persona comes out that we don't like so much. As you may have read in the past few weeks in our weekly newsletter, The Around the Parish, the Reverend Denise Donato was ordained on Friday as an auxiliary bishop for our communion. She is our first female bishop, and we give God thanks. I listened to her radio interview online yesterday. If you haven't listened to it, I sent a link out through our app, and I encourage you to tune in. It was really pretty good. As she spoke about her journey, her sense of call to being a priest, she identified that nudging, that urging, even as a young girl. And she wanted to be closer to the altar of God. She wanted to participate in the Eucharist. As I've said many, many times already, and I will keep saying it until everyone here fully understands it, we are each called. We are each given an identity before God. Now, some of us have a clue as to what that identity might be like, and others of us may not. Some of us may find ourselves stumbling from one thing to another because we have not yet found that thing, that thing that makes our heart sing. We may not have discovered that je ne sais quoi, as we might say, because we haven't taken enough risks. And the interesting thing is that we all may have skills and abilities that we don't even know about. And they may be things that scare us. And heck, I would even say, the things that scare us the most are probably precisely close to what it is that God has in mind for us. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and they went up the mountain. Mountains feature prominently throughout Scripture. Mountains tend to be linked with a spiritual place where God can be encountered where God dwells, where spiritual truth is encountered. So whenever we hear about a mountain being involved in a story, we should consider that the mountain represents an alternative reality, a reality different from the reality we experience here on level ground in the everyday world. Mountaintop experiences are the places where the curtain is drawn back and the deeper truth, a truer truth, shines forth. That's what happened that day on the mountain with Jesus. The truth of his identity shone forth. It was revealed to Peter, James, and John in dazzling reality. It was the more profound truth, not just an alternate truth, but the truth that had always, always been there. It was Jesus. It was only Jesus. Today, perhaps we might want to consider this story as a parable for each of us. What is our own deeper reality. Who are we if God were to pull back the curtain and allow our deeper selves to shine forth? Would the image standing before others be one of brilliance? Would they be amazed? More importantly, would you be amazed? God spoke to, to the disciples saying, this is my beloved. Couldn't the same thing be said about each one of us? This is my beloved. 
I think it's interesting that the Revised Common Lectionary sees fit to place the Transfiguration story at this point in the church year. Now, our Roman sisters and brothers do not put it here, but we Protestants, or the Protestants among us do. And I like it here because it sets in our minds Jesus' identity as he prepares to set his sights on Calvary. Here on the mountain, we get to see Jesus' true self so that we can better understand the story that lies ahead. Perhaps the gift of Lent is that it is a season that allows us to practice divesting ourselves of some of the baggage and clutter that conceals our deeper, our truer, our more brilliant selves. My prayer this Transfiguration Sunday is that we will let this story remind us not only of Jesus' identity as God's beloved, but also reminds us of our own potential. At least as God sees it, anyway. I pray that God's love for each of us will transfigure us all into all that we can. Invite everyone to stand in their able and together let's reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us kneel as we are able for the prayers. God will come and will not keep silence. So let us pray, open our eyes, open our ears. Rabbi, it is good for us to be here in your presence. Open our eyes to your glory. Open our ears to your call. Open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Open our eyes. Open our ears. To those who do not know your love and mercy, reveal yourself, great God. Shine your light through us, that our lives might witness to your Son, Jesus. Open our eyes. Open our ears. Holy One, you have chosen to wear the clouds and meet our forebears on the mountains. In doing so, you remind us that you created all things good and continue to manifest your glory through those things that you have created. Remind us to also honor your creation. Open our eyes. Open, Open our ears. O oh God, we thank you for those women and men in our lives who parent us, teach us, and mentor us. Raise up strong leaders, O oh God, leaders who follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Open our eyes, open, open our ears. ears. You are a powerful God, ruler of the heavens and the earth, and yet you are close enough to hear our humble prayers. Attend to our loved ones, those whom we name now, the sick, Sister Danielle Murphy, 
Mary Ella Long, Dick Cantrell, Jay King, Taylor Grimmer, Lovell Mackey, Judy Kiesling, and Mike Chambers. For Richard Jones, Debbie Broom, Johnny Cronin, Susan Schlesinger, and Lance Cheney. For Chloe Stopler Easley, Paul Gossett, Terry Burks, and Rick Craig. For Debbie Wilson, Jason Miller, Sarah Visa, Lisa Cheney, Ray Boyles, Penny Walker, and Janice West. And for those in grief, distress, or trouble, Preston Smith and Joyce Lynch and family, Danny Cook and his family, the family and friends of Susan Session, for Myrna Campbell, Richard Jones, Martha Simmons, Laura Boyce, Rod and Casey Conrad, and Ralph Krauss and family. We also pray for those celebrating their birthdays, Stephen Sholin and Chloe Stopper Easley, and those celebrating anniversaries, Andy Kinslow and Russ Kirkpatrick, and all those celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries this week. And God, we ask you to protect Andy Kinslow and Russ Kirkpatrick and Paul Maskey and all who are traveling. And we entrust your everlasting care to those who have died, especially James Cooper, Theda Cook, Susan Session, and Ralph Krause's sister. Open our eyes. Open our ears. God, you are our hope. Trusting in your goodness, we make our song even at the grave. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Open our eyes. Open, open our ears. ears. Holy and merciful God, open our ears to your call. Listen to the cries of our hearts. Accept our prayers and answer them according to your good and perfect will. In the name of Jesus, the Lord of glory, we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. O God, our Maker, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbors as ourselves. O oh God, be merciful and forgive us our sin. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of God's heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand with you. Sisters and brothers, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Offer God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. <laughs> Thank <laughs>
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to our God. Let us give thanks to the Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Creating and liberating God, you called your people into covenant with you and sealed your trust with Moses on Sinai's mountaintop. Forgiving God, when in disobedience the people fell away and turned after other gods, you called your people back to the covenant you made. On a mountain, you encouraged your prophet Elijah by speaking to him in a still, small voice. Dazzling God on a mountain, Peter, James, and John bore witness to Jesus as he stood between Moses the lawgiver and Elijah the prophet, revealing the brilliant radiance of your son's gospel message. And on Calvary's hill, your son continued to reveal your glory to all. And so we gladly thank you, celebrating your glory with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, singing this hymn of unending praise. He confronted the power of sin and disarmed it forever. In his offering of himself, he became the perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Redeemed by Christ, we have been adopted as your children. By your pardon, you have made us worthy to praise you. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus, at supper with his friends, took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. Again, he, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. to him with grateful hearts we approach your holy table remembering our Savior's sacrifice and rejoicing in his victory confident in Christ's sovereign purpose we declare our faith this cup, 
we may partake of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Remembering the ecumenical Catholic Diocese of Mid-America, our sister community of Our Lady of Guadalupe Mission in Chicago, and joining ourselves with Raphael, our bishop, and with Bishop Denise, the newest bishop of our communion, and all who lead your people in apostolic ministry, may we be renewed in his risen life, filled with love and strengthened in our will to serve others. And make of our lives, we pray, a pure and holy sacrifice, acceptable to you, knitting us together as one in your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you in the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever.
in the cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ in one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are. May light and peace through Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Sisters and brothers, let your light shine so that others may see your good works and glorify our God in heaven. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.